Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire. Huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In the year 247, in the age of judges, Vartan was summoned home by a letter stating that his father had died under mysterious circumstances. Upon returning home, Vartan opened his mind to the possibility that his father's death and his hometown of Eterno was not everything that it appeared to be. Welcome to Ethereal Embrace. I'm Baya. And a little fun fact. A single portobello mushroom has more potassium than a banana? Keep that in mind next time you get one of those critical fail cramps. Day 2. Evening. Last stop, Tavern and Inn. I think it's time to pay Greystone another visit. Do we want to look at inside the box first, try to find the key, or do we want to go to Greystone without knowing what's in the box? I'm... What's in a, the box? A, I'm every... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I... Every time. Frosted Flakes, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, hesitant to open the box after Timurin told us to be wary of what Greystone tells us to do. I, would, I think maybe I would, we I, should get the key, at least. So we have it. And uh, Save a trip. And I think I'm going to pick up my father's hammer as well. We don't know if we could trust Timurin or Greystone. So maybe, maybe Timurin was just telling us that. I mean, obviously Timurin was against whatever your father was researching and wanted to put a stop to it. Yeah. And Greystone seems to want you to find out more about what your father was doing. All right. Yeah? Makes well, sense he wants me. us to he wants us to find out more and continue his work. Yeah. Um Yeah. If your father had something to do with the blessing that seems to be going on in town I would understand why Greystone wants us, wants you to continue it. Um, so I, I think getting the key is a good idea. So we have it on us, and then going to get more information from Greystone. Yeah. One person carry the key. One person carry the bats. It's a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right. So is that the next plan of order? Yeah. Yep. So just as you guys finish your conversation with Bastille, the door opens. It is getting closer to dinner time, so you're not surprised by this. But four or five different townsfolk come walking in the the tavern all at once and they're having a conversation, you know, sweating, you know, wiping the sweat from their brow. And then Magno comes walking down the stairs from the bedrooms upstairs, and she sees you guys sitting at the table and gives you a quick wave. But she's all geared up. So she was geared up before, but she's geared up again, like fully armed and uh, wearing armor. And she's uh, she's got some water skins on her persons as well, so it looks like she's going out. Yeah, bye. Did you want to talk to Magno now um, or later? Seems yeah, like they're running out of I time. Mean, Let's. What do you What do you think? Should we talk to her? I 
I mean, Why not? She, she's, she's here. here. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we should talk to Bastille. Or, sorry, not Bastille. Magno. Uh, I have those mushrooms. Might as well give it, give them to her before they go bad. Soggy in the bag. Yeah. I appreciate the information, Bastille. Uh, we will talk again soon. Maybe we can have a, another drink. Yes, it was very nice having a conversation with you, Vartan. Again, I'm sorry for your loss. I am going to stay here for a little while and get myself some dinner, I think. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I enjoyed having a conversation with somebody in this town. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry about the rough start, but yeah, uh, this is definitely the most enjoyable conversation and the most helpful conversation I've had since I got here. <laughs> it's all about who you know. Ah, well, praise be to Greyhawk. Safe travels, friend. Yeah, you too. So, Vartan gets out of that side of the booth. <laughs> throw back the beers. Slides. <laughs> yeah, just shoot the rest of the beers. Yep, okay. Yeah, uh, Baya uh, shakes his hand as well and bids him adieu and goes to over to Magno. All right, so you kind of catch Magno as she's headed towards the door. And, and she says, hey, h- how's it going? Oh, hi. I have something for you. Let me let me just pull it out. And she starts pulling out the mushrooms. And she gets to the third one. And she pulls out that piece of Zill along with it. Okay. <laughs> so she sees the first two. She sees the first mushroom come out. And she's like, oh, my goodness, mushrooms. Oh, that's awesome that oh my god what is that and and as you pull the zill out so i was told that this is the zill that you murdered is that correct yeah i did take care of the zill that's um yep did it come with the mushrooms or (laughs) um it just happened to be in my bag i've clumsy me i should have separated them um so how did you how did you learn how to kill this sill, by the way, since it came up naturally like this? She, <laughs> she looks back over her shoulder to Cody and says, Honestly, it it was Cody that told me what to do. He showed me the spot on the zill. He drew it out on a piece of parchment for me and and uh he let me use one of his spears and I was I did what it, what he instructed me to do and I was able to take it down, so well, that's uh, that's quite interesting that a bartender, barkeep, knows how to kill Zill. Yeah. Do you still have the the what what the spear? I the spear was in the Zill's neck still through the back of its head. They didn't when take it was the dead, when you see it. They didn't take the spear out. No, they didn't. They were afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want it to come back to life. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have taken the spear out while we were there. <laughs> um, cool. Did he tell you to come to town? Like, what? How do you how do you know Cody? And how did that conversation come up? Oh, here's the other two mushrooms I have in my bag as well. But they're she, good for you for killing the Zill. And she looks at the mushrooms to inspecting them, making sure there's like no Zill blood on <laughs> it or anything. She said, "Um, thank you. I think. Uh, actually, I came here because Cody was here. I, I kind of followed him here. At least, rumors of him. Took me a while to track him down. That's." <clears throat> Interesting. Um, why don't I order you a beer and you can tell me all about it? She says, well, I was about to go practice my uh, sword play. And uh, would you would you be interested in a quick sparring session? Um, she looks at Vartan or, or <laughs> Ovik. Well, I was about to go pick up my... My father's hammer, I I wouldn't mind having a sparring match with you with that. Need to get great used to using it. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I'm not thinking anything crazy. You're kind of a giant and uh <laughs> it's 
a little intimidating, but I mean, just go through some flows, some moves with my sword. I, I'm going to try just sticking to the sword and not using another spear tonight, see if I can, just in case the Zill comes back. I'm not anticipating anything, but it wouldn't be bad practice. Yeah. Where's, where's your father's hammer? Uh, it's back at my house on the other side of the temple. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Sorry, declining a drink. I just don't want to drink a whole lot before I go on duty tonight, just in case. I mean, it's always water. Stay hydrated. Oh, I've got water. She taps the couple water uh, skins on her belt. Can I see if she's wearing anything else? Or did we already cover that last time? Is she wearing the same stuff? Yeah, she's wearing the same stuff. I can tell okay. you real quick. Anything seem weird? Besides the fact that she followed Besides Cody? It. Yeah, and he knows how to kill a Zill. Uh, we need to ask him about that. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing seems weird on her outside of that. It looks like she was armed to go potentially on duty tonight or practice moves even right now. Yeah. She's got some waters and stuff. If she was going to work out and get sweaty, you know, she's got waters on her. And uh, she is a tiefling, so she's medium height. She's nothing, not not towering <laughs> like a furbog. But... uh but yeah, I mean, nothing seems out of the norm for what she's saying she's doing outside of the fact that she followed Cody here and Cody knows how to kill a Zill and she just let that die in the air. Yeah, um, Baya takes the Zill meat back. See, I'm wondering what rumors led her here. Yeah, why she was looking for this particular barkeep. And she came here because of him. And he can't even count people to get the right amount of beers. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's so weird. <laughs> high, high strength, low intelligence. You know what? We'll, we'll head out here in just a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip Cody for getting us those beers uh, real quick. Hey, Cody. I'm gonna walk up to the bar. All right. She walks out of the bar. Another group of three or four people walk in as she's walking out of the tavern. Obviously, the dinner dinner crowd's coming in, and Cody turns back and he's like, "Ah, yeah. Uh, hey, Vartan, what's up?" I'm gonna I'm gonna flip a gold coin to him and be like, "I'm gonna wave him over with 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 a finger." All right. He catches the coin and he brings it, and instead of pocketing it like what you would expect most bar keeps to do. He sets the coin on the table in between you guys and then pulls his finger back. Not giving it back to you, but kind of leaving it there like, what's this information? You know, what's this coin costing me? So, yeah, what's uh, what's on your mind? You got here around the same time that I left, about 10 years ago. Yeah, I remember. I remember you leaving. What, what led you to come in here? I... I liked the homey feel of the town. Where did you hear about the town from? I had actually traveled here, um, you know, maybe 90 years before that, 100 years before that. I think uh, it was during a war that was out in, in Isan, and I decided to stopped by and travel through and take a shortcut and landed here and met some folks and your town seemed its own little island away from the war and I promised myself if I ever finished up my career I would retire to this lovely city oh. so did you ever uh, whenever you were you said you were in the war yeah yep about I guess 120 years ago now man were, Time really flies. Were these Zill around then? No, the the war was just between people, unfortunately. Oh. What do you know about these Zill? I he looks over at the crowd of people behind you coming in for dinner and people are starting to sit down at tables and stuff. And he says, "I have encountered Zill before in a faraway place, not even in Isan, on, on another continent. And it was a horrendous occasion. Somebody was trying to summon demons. It, it, a whole whole warlock thing was not good. Oh. But uh, 
we were able to take care of that problem back then, and I just I learned some stuff along the way. All right, and uh, I'm done. I just want to do an insight check. Yeah. It's a 19. Okay, uh, 19 is a really good roll. So he he is being honest with you. You don't get that he's being deceptive by any means, mm-hmm. but it does strike you odd that he was at war 120 years ago. Mm-hmm. Said he fought the Zill another time before that. Yeah. And Asimar is typically only aged to about 150 years old. Yeah. He looks, like I said in the previous description, he's an Asimar man. He's got dark eyes and hair, and he has a tired smile and old eyes, but a middle aged face. Okay. I'm like, well, I don't want to hold you up, but thank you. Yeah. Not a not a problem. Uh, sorry about the confusion on the drinks earlier, <laughs> and uh, it's all right. It seems to be a issue, uh, but not not with just you. But yeah, you're fine. Appreciate it. Yeah, ha- ha- have a good one, Vartan. Mikhail, what are you guys eating tonight? All right, I'm gonna head out, catch up with everybody. All right, so you head out and you see that Magno was waiting outside next to the tavern for you okay. and she says I guess we're heading over to the stables right yep alright cool well it's this way so she begins walking do you want to talk to her now or kind of fast forward what are, you, what are your thoughts yeah did you have any more questions yeah so Magno you said that you've been looking for Cody for a while correct <laughs> yeah for years it feels like Why is that? Cody is, well, I'm sure your father knew, and I'm sure he's got it somewhere in his research, but Cody's not really just a local barkeep, if you can't tell. He was a bit of a legend where I come from. He fought demons and giants and took down liches all by himself, and... He was, in my opinion, set up for the murder of a king in my area. Now, this is before judges had taken over our territory, but it was still a very big impact. And it was said that Cody died shortly after murdering the king, but... I didn't believe that, and I did some research, and I found some reports of a soldier that was in Isan, and so I took a boat, came to this country, and and continued to follow the path along until I found him here, luckily. Now, I, I don't want him getting in trouble as the Kingslayer, <laughs> so I, uh... Hope that secret's safe with us. Oh yeah. Um I mean I as you know, I've I've traveled for the past ten years and and uh where where was that land like I'm I'm just curious. Um where where did all that happen? His his travels or where he killed the king? I guess where where you're from and, and, and he's from. I am from the Glinting Mountains. It's over on, well, it's kind of northeast of here. And the king that he had killed was from Leodra, which is connected to Girdren from the Link. They're two twin large cities, but they were held by one king. And it is said that he killed the king in Leodra and then fled across the continent or tried to flee across the continent but was killed somewhere in the Leodran wilds. And then the rest goes to myth and fable. But I myself am hmm. from the Glinting Mountains which is still northeast of here but southwest of the Link and Leodra. Who is said to have killed Cody? It says that he had fallen in battle by a group of mercenaries. 
they said that they killed him and collected the bounty. Why would he have killed the king? They... They said that the king is his brother and that they got into a fight and that Cody was stronger and more powerful than the king but the king was trying to get rid of Cody to secure his own place. Cody was the eldest but had given his seat away to the king, his brother. That is at least what legends tell. This was before I was born. How long ago did Cody supposedly kill the king? I would say, if legend has it, close to 300 years ago. Shit. And Cody's a badass, too. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I'm hoping he'll tutor me. How did, <laughs> how did he stay alive for this long? I couldn't tell you that. Hopefully that's something I find out during the tutelage. <laughs> Looks like we're coming up to your house. Do you... Want to spar out in the front, or you got better area out back? Uh, yeah, let's do it out back. I imagine there's a good spot in the back. Yeah, your dad had a spot for sparring back there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I just need to head in, uh, get the hammer, and, uh, hey, Ovik, you want to join me on, or do y'all want to join me on uh, checking the office? Yeah, uh, yeah, we can look to... for that key real quick while you're in there. Yeah. Okay, so she walks around back. She actually, while you're going into the house, makes a quick pit stop into the stables to say hi to the horses. And mm. you guys go in, again, to the left. As soon as you enter the foyer, there's a library where the hammer is hanging above the mantle. So I assume you're going to want to grab that? Yep. Okay. So you grab the hammer and then you make your way to the office? Yeah. Yeah, I guess while I was grabbing the hammer, they were going to yeah, check the yeah. office. Go in the office and see if I see a key on the desk or anywhere in the office. Okay, so make an investigation check on the desk. I got a 21. 17. Okay, yeah, both of you guys. Uh, <laughs> did you say 21, Tisha? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you guys walk into the room and Tish is like, check the left drawer on the bottom just without even looking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So Sobaya says that and then Ovik checks the drawer and it is immediately right there. <laughs> easy to find. Super easy. Um, so yeah. So you have the key. Giving me those key vines. Um, anything else in the office? Uh, yeah. So what, are you, what else are you looking for in the office? With the 21, you're probably going to find whatever you're looking for. Just uh, the father's notebooks and research. Yep. So in that drawer, there is some notebooks about some of them are about the new people in town. Just a journal that talks about it's like a daily journal. Like, hey, met with Bastille today. He had interest in this topic. Uh, Hey, looked into the history of Cody. Believe Cody, you know, might not be who he says he is. So just kind of scanning over them, you do collect two journals that seem to fit what you're looking for. And then a third book, which isn't in journal format. It's more like a notebook that has details about spells in them, but not spells like a spellcaster would write down spells where it's like a formula or a recipe. It's more like notations about how a spell works or where to find it or who might be able to infuse the spell stone with spells and give him different things you find those three books based off skimming through the items that are in there that will come in handy yeah do can i look at it and see who can cast oh what was the spell with the spell stone hallow hallow um yeah so we will say with the 21 you flip through the pages really quick and you find the same emblem on it that matches the symbol that was on the spellstone and the symbol that was in Bastille's book. And on the bottom right hand corner it says Emery. Okay. So we need to step and see the arcanist also. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna come walking in <laughs> be like, hey did y'all find anything? Yeah. yeah you could say that. Uh the key is here and found a couple of your dad's journals uh, which we'll have to look over later but they might have some 
useful information. In this curious notebook, it's not how to cast spells, but exactly how the spells work, what they do, and who can perform, and some of them have who can perform them. Huh. You say anything about the that hallowed spell? That's the only one that I know. Yeah, uh, that was the first one I looked up, Great Minds. Yeah, Emery. Emery's name is by the hallow spell. Huh. All right, then. I'm gonna... I'm gonna just... Lay my old hammer. Just, like, I'm just gonna lay it up against the wall in the office. And, uh... Like, well... Better get used to using this. If we're gonna be fighting any of these ill. All right, so you take your common hammer off and replace it with the... The fur bogs. Yeah. And Baya's going to say, while you're sparring with Magno, maybe see it, get some information on how on how to kill the Zill. Yeah. Kyrian's Warhammer is a solid, heavy block head hammer with ridges on one end and the other three sides are flat. The top of the Warhammer has a six-inch spike protruding from it should the wielder need to thrust it forward to stab something. You have a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. This weapon also has five charges of life steal. As a bonus action on a successful hit, the wielder can use a charge of life steal to do an additional 1d6 plus 2 damage. The amount of damage done to the enemy is immediately added to the wielder as temporary hit points. When the charge is activated, the hammer glows a dark purple hue. That's cool. And then it is, so it holds five charges each morning at dawn. I believe it recharges 1d6 of the charges. Okay. All right. You guys wrapped up in the office and heading out to spar now or anything else you want to do with the info that you got? Um, While they're sparring, I'll probably look and read the journal, see if anything pops out. Okay. I'll give the other journal to Ovik. Yeah, I'll flip through that one while the other two are sparring. Thank you for listening to this episode of Ethereal Embrace and a Fool's Quest production. Vartan the Furbog Fighter is voiced and played by Adam Culbertson. Baya Rustin, the half-elf sorcerer, is voiced and played by Tisha. Ovik, the Tiefling Cleric, is voiced and played by Chris Johnson. And I am Nico, your GM. Please remember to drop us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcatcher. Music provided in part by Midnight Syndicate, makers of the original Dungeons & Dragons soundtrack. If you would like to follow us on social media or say hello to the cast, details on where to find us will be in this episode's notes. Remember, be safe. We love you all, and stay foolish.